Dear students, in previous sessions, we discussed about a skeleton in relation to movement and locomotion. We did understand that along with bones, the muscles and the nervous system are also important. And we discussed in detail about 206 bones which we have in our body, axial skeleton and also the appendicular skeleton. Axial skeleton which makes axis of our body includes skull, vertebral column and the rib cage. An appendicular skeleton will include the girdles and the limb bones. In skull, we studied about cranial bones, the facial bones. In vertebral column, we studied about vertebrae and in rib, the rib cage and the way ribs are arranged in the rib cage, out of which the first seven pairs, out of 12 pairs in the rib cage, the first seven pairs are true ribs, eighth, ninth and tenth pair they are false ribs and eleventh and twelfth are floating ribs. We did discuss the pectoral girdle, the pelvic girdle and the cavities in these two girdles too fix with the limb bones. In the forelimb that is hand we discussed all the 30 bones and similarly in the leg bones that is hind limb bones we discussed about all the 30 bones of the leg. Today we wish to show these bones in the skeleton and also in some models to make you understand their real arrangement in natural way in our body. Let's now see the skeleton and these bones the way we have them in our body. Children, we have reached near a skeleton and I am quite excited to see all the bones in one vision in one go. I am sure you are equally interested to know about placement of these bones in our body which we are going to discuss along with this skeleton. As you know, a skeleton there are two main divisions axial skeleton in which comes the skull, the vertebral column and the rib cage. As the name indicates axial means axis it makes axis of the body and that is our head, our chest and the vertebral column. And other division is appendicular skeleton which is going to include pectoral girdle pelvic girdle, limbs, hind limb and the forelimb. Let me start explaining the bones in this skeleton starting with head which is part of axial skeleton. You can see a skull here, it has two parts the cranium and the facial bones. There are 8 bones in the cranium and there are 14 bones in the facial region. The cranium bones are attached to each other by sutures, so they do not move much. Facial bones are making the face. This is the lower jaw. You will be surprised to know that this lower jaw is part of a skull, a continuation from a skull and this is the jaw which is movable. The upper jaw is not movable. Try to masticate something and you will see only lower jaw moves and movement of lower jaw allows you to eat, to speak and use your mouth accordingly. You can also see the eye sockets where eyeball are kept. The eyeball completely fits into this and you can see only the exposed part of the eye. You can also see a small hole here through which the auditory canal goes, it is ear. You can see the arrangement of teeth on the two jaws. So, this is making the skull. Coming to second part of axial skeleton which is vertebral column. Vertebral column begins here and continues. You can see this part and now it will continue further. I will see this from this side and as well as this side. This is all vertebral column and 
there are 26 vertebrae in our vertebral column. First one is atlas vertebra on which the head is resting. It is a very delicate junction and very delicate part of our body. The last part of brain, you remember brain is here and the last part of brain, the medulla oblongata or hind brain continues as a spinal cord and runs through vertebrae. That means the hind part of brain will run through this atlas then other vertebrae. For that each vertebra has a special arrangement. Children you can see the processes coming here on the back side also and in the center there is a canal. Through that canal runs our spinal cord and see what nature has provided a kind of protection for soft spinal cord which is running from this point up to this point and it is covered by these vertebrae on all the sides. Why do we have so many small pieces of bones called vertebrae in our backbone or in our vertebral column? So that there is flexibility in our body, we can move our back, our body right, left or forward or backward and in doing so our spinal cord is not damaged. Suppose it was one piece, then it would have been a huge pressure on the spinal cord which is very soft tissue. First vertebra is atlas, second is axis. They have different names individually and independently. We have seven cervical vertebra, this is cervical region. Then we have 12 thoracic vertebra, this is th thoracic region. I can show you this is thoracic region where you can see rib attachment. Then there are five lumbar vertebra that is in lumbar region. Then we have one sacrum it is fused and one coccygeal that is also fused. You can see a small tail like thing coming out and that is why sometimes it is also called tail vertebra. This skeleton belongs to human. Suppose it was a skeleton of some other mammal, maybe cow, maybe cat, they have tail. This particular bone will continue in the tail and that is why it is called tail vertebra. I hope you know in the process of evolution, we evolved from lower mammals who had tail. We do not have tail, but we have tail vertebra showing that yes, our ancestors did have tail. So this is about the vertebral column. After this, I come to third part of axial skeleton, ribs and rib cage. This is rib cage and these are ribs. We have 12 pairs of ribs attached to 12 thoracic vertebra. Each rib is attached with vertebra, thoracic vertebra on the dorsal side. Children, you know this is the dorsal side and this is the ventral side. That means this is my ventral side and that is back is dorsal side. So ribs are attached to dorsal side to the vertebrae or vertebral column and ventral side to sternum. This is sternum. Again, this is an important bone. Out of 12 ribs, the first 7 ribs are directly attached to sternum. I will count for you. This is of course clavicle, it is not rib. I will explain this while talking about pectoral girdle. So first rib is this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can see their attachment with the sternum. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. All the 7 are attached to sternum on the ventral side that is dorsal side and these are called true ribs. Coming to 8th, 9th and 10th. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now 8, 9, 10. These 3 which you are seeing 8, 9 and 10 pair. 
when I talk of ribs it is always in pair. Now these three are not attached directly to the sternum. You can see this was seventh they are attached to the seventh. That is why this kind of curvature to the rib cage and these three pairs of ribs 8, 9 and 10 are called false ribs. After this there are two more pairs 11 and 12. You can see this is 11 and this is 12. These are not attached ventrally only dorsally and they are called floating ribs. This natural arrangement is to give a proper shape to our rib cage because rib cage is going to lodge one heart here and two lungs here. So it should have a spacing and the shape accordingly. At this point in a natural body is a diaphragm this kind of position that makes thoracic cavity or rib cage airtight. It is very significant that this area should be airtight in normal case so that respiration and circulation that is functioning of heart and functioning of lungs go on normally. So this is about the rib cage, ribs and last part of axial skeleton. So children I hope you have understood axial skeleton. We now come to appendicular skeleton which will include two girdles and two limbs, pectoral girdle pelvic girdle, four limbs and hind limbs. This is four limb or hand. I have taken it out to show the structural detail to you. Before I start explaining this, let me explain the pectoral girdle. Pectoral girdle has two equal halves, one for the left and other for the right side. It has a scapula, broad scapula, this this is the one and then it has a spike and a process called acromion process. Then it has a small depression here, a cavity. It is called glenoid cavity into which our hand will fix. So this is pectoral girdle. This is hand of four limb and we are going to understand bones in our hand. This is humerus which is the upper part of the hand and this is head of humerus the round one which is fixed in the glenoid cavity of pectoral girdle and is able to move and that is why we can move our shoulder the way we want. This hand this attachment is here so this is humerus. This is of course elbow coming to the lower part of hand we have two bones can you see two bones? They are called radius and ulna. This one is radius, the strong one and this slightly thinner one is ulna. Children you can remember like this, the one towards the little finger is ulna, the one towards the thumb is radius. Now after this comes the wrist, this is a wrist. There are eight small bones in wrist. You can see small, small bones here. And when you make movement of your wrist like this, it is possible because of these small bones. Suppose there was one flat bone, then you could not move your hand or wrist in this fashion. After this will come five bones here which make your palm. So these are carpals, the wrist bones are also called carpals and these five palm bones are called metacarpals. After that are your fingers. Each finger has three bones, similarly you can see here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Whereas thumb has two bones. 1, 2. So total 14 bones. As I told you there are 30 bones in our hand. So this is 1, 2, 3, 
then 8, then 5, then 14 that totals to 30 bones. You can definitely appreciate children the arrangement of small bones in your palm, in your fingers and in your wrist. Because of this you are able to use your hand the way you want to. And hence our these bones, small bones and the joints are very very important. So I have explained to you the pectoral girdle and the four limb or hand bones. I put it back and then I proceed to hind limb and pelvic girdle. Children now we will discuss about the pelvic girdle and the hind limb or leg bones. This is pelvic girdle. Pelvic girdle is also having two halves, the right and the left equal halves for two legs. Each half has three bones, ilium, ischium, pubis and three join at one point and that point has a depression called acetabulum. Acetabulum is the cavity in which head of this bone called femur or thigh bone will fix and will be able to move. This is like ball, head is like ball and acetabulum is like cavity. In that cavity this head will fix and will be able to move. One more thing to tell you, the pubic bone is very important. Between the pubic bones, the genitalia is placed. If there is any injury to pubic bone, the whole area in this part is very badly disturbed including the aperture for urine or urinary aperture or anus or reproductive passages. So this is a place that is why it is called pubic bone because it has pubis area in that genitalia is placed. Coming back to hind limb which is attached to the pelvic girdle. This is the leg. This is the femur. Children you know that leg also has 30 bones. This femur has the head which is fixed in acetabulum cavity of pelvic girdle which allows the movement. Then knee and after knee two bones tibio and fibula. The fibula is feeble, small or weak. Length is equal but otherwise it is thin and it is also towards the small toe and this is towards the big toe. Similarly like in forelimb it has tarsals 8 then 5 metatarsals in the feet and then 14 phalanges or digits that makes it 30. So the leg also has 30 bones. With this we have understood the skull, the neck area, the vertebral column, the rib cage, the pectoral girdle, the forelimb, pelvic girdle and the hind limb and importance of all these bones in our body. So children you have seen a true skeleton. I am sure you have enjoyed seeing the bones in reality, the hand bones, the humerus, the leg bone, femur and also tarsals, metatarsals, carpals, metacarpals and it was so interesting to see the vertebrae and the canal through which the spinal cord goes and you have also seen the importance and the significance of girdles in our body, the pectoral girdle, the way it is arranged to hold the hand and the pelvic girdle, the way the arrangement allows the movement of leg and how our bones are arranged in such a wonderful pattern so that we can move our body in a way we wish to and we are able to do all the work. Children, finally I want you to appreciate the arrangement of bones in our body, the flexibility, the utility of joints, tendons, the cartilages and ligaments. Can you imagine if we did not have this kind of flexible arrangement our body could be in one piece. So in today's session we have understood in detail the arrangement of bones, their significance and the joints and their utility in our body. With this we come to the end of this session. Thank you.